Hey there, it's Luke here for the M5 Stack official channel. What are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be focusing on some computer science fundamentals, one of which being binary. What is binary? Binary uses base 2 to represent any number, using only a 0 or a 1. So how does it do this? Each position in the counting system is a power of 2. So every time we move up a column, the 1 represents double that of the previous number. Then we take all the numbers represented by those 1s and add them all together to get the final number. Each 0 or 1 in the chain is called a bit. 8 bits make up a byte. In your computer, a byte could represent anything from a letter on your keyboard to a tiny fraction of audio in a song. To see how this works, we're going to make a binary calculator in MicroPython. First, plug in your M5 stack and open the Moo Python IDE. If you've not used the Moo IDE before, I suggest you go and look at our previous videos to see how to get set up. I'm going to start by adding the main modules that we need to display text and control the various functions of the M5 stack. Then we're going to create a label to display both our binary string and the value represented by that binary string. I'll call it label0 and then we'll use the M5 text box function to create this text label. First we enter the XY position then followed by text, could be a placeholder here, and then the font, there are various fonts to choose from, and then the color in hexadecimal format. We'll go on to talk about hexadecimal format later in the video. And then finally, the rotation of the screen. We're going to need multiple labels in this lesson, so go ahead and copy them, change the label numbers, and also change the XY positions so that the text messages don't overlap. Once we've done that, we'll use the LCD clear function to clear the screen on the start of the program, resetting any previous data displayed on the screen. Now I'm going to create a list, which I'll call binary num, to store our string of binary digits. First, as a test, we'll fill it up with four ones, which I know is equal to 15. Then we'll create a value which will hold the decimal equivalent of the binary string. Then we're going to create a while loop in which we'll use a text box to constantly display the decimal value of the binary string. We'll do that by typing label.setText and then put our binary num list into a string function as it's required for the M5 text box to display it. Next we're going to use a for loop, which is going to multiply those ones by progressive powers of 2 as it goes through the list. We'll do that by typing for i in range, length of list. Remember to add the colon at the end of the for loop. And then create a digit variable which will go through each index in the list and remove each of the ones once it's been counted to avoid counting the ones more than once. Then to multiply each position by its power of 2, we'll use the POW function. The POW function is very useful. It takes the base, base 2, which we're using for binary, and the exponent. So in our case, the base will be 2, and the exponent will be i, for each increasing index in the list and that will be added to the value variable. Now all we need to do is use the label to display that value to the screen. And now let's do a quick test. Once we run it, we see that the value label displays the decimal equivalent of the binary string. We can change this a couple of times and see the result. Now that it's working on a basic level, how about we add some interactivity? We can use the A and B buttons to append a 0 or a 1 to our binary string. We do that by creating an if condition 
where the condition is button A was pressed. Then use the append function to add a zero, or if the B button was pressed, we can add a one. Right now though, our program is structured that even if we add a zero or one by pressing A and B, it'll automatically be removed from the list. So we only want to trigger our for loop once we've finished inputting our binary string. We can do that by pressing button C to start this for loop. Then we also need to reset the value to zero to empty it so we can calculate a new binary string. Once we're done with having fun with that, we can consider another format that computers use. That format is hexadecimal. Whereas we said that binary is base 2, hexadecimal is base 16. It uses numbers up till 9 and then changes to A, B, C, D, E, F to represent numbers in a much shorter form than binary. You'll often see hexadecimal used for I2C addresses or memory addresses. We can easily convert our binary or decimal value into hex by using the Python hex command. So let's use our second label to display the equivalent hex value. Playing around with this, we can see that a byte filled full of ones is 255 which is the maximum number that can be stored in a single byte. We therefore need multiple bytes to store and send more complex data. For instance, letters. So if it's all numbers, how do we display letters on the screen when we press a key on our keyboard? That's where ASCII comes in, or the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. ASCII has a numerical value for every single key on your keyboard. How about we add a function to our program which will display the equivalent character for the number entered. Python has two useful functions for doing so. CHR which converts decimal to ASCII and ORD which converts a decimal number to its ASCII code. So in our third label we can use the CHR function to get the character code. And there we have it, we can play around seeing which numbers are equivalent to which letters. Hope you had fun in this lesson. Computer science has such a rich history. If you're interested to know more, I'll consider doing more of this kind of videos in the future. Remember, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.